Hello everyone. In this video, I want to introduce the goal programming analysis to you. Goal programming is another application of optimization analysis. I want to teach everyone how to use goal programming in this lecture. Before today's lecture, let's have a further discussion on constraints. As we have been learning, constraints are very important in an optimization analysis. They refer to the limited amount of resources or the capacity limits we are facing in our business operation. The key feature of an optimization analysis is that we always look at constraints first. We always look at what we have first, and then we develop the analysis models in optimization. This differentiates the optimization analysis from other models. Constraints are very important. Furthermore, we can separate constraints into hard constraints and soft constraints. Hard constraints are the capacity limit we cannot change. There are many examples of hard constraints in practice. Can you give me an example? I think uh, the number of uh, seats on a flight is a hard constraint to airline companies. No matter how high the demand for the tickets is during the holiday season, the airline company can really not change the number of seats on a flight. So the number of seats on a flight is a very good example of uh, hard constraints. But uh, on the other hand, there are some constraints. They are not as strict as hard constraints. We call those constraints soft constraints. Soft constraints refer to the constraints that we can add more resources into. For instance, in the bond investment example, we as a financial analyst, we want to provide some financial advice to our client. And the client told us that currently she has a $1 million in hands for the potential investment. But if we as financial analysts really believe the market is a bullish market, the client doesn't mind finding a way to give us a little bit more money to invest a little bit more. Let's say the client says she can contribute $5,000 more or $10,000 more. At that moment, the investment fund is not a hard constraint anymore because the client can contribute more resources to address the constraint. The constraint will become an example of a soft constraint. In our previous studies, we assumed that all constraints are hard constraints. Based on this assumption, we developed some modeling approaches such as integer optimization analysis, binary optimization analysis, and network modeling theory, and so on. If we have a, a question with a soft constraint, we use goal programming analysis to treat the question with soft constraints. I want to use an example to introduce goal programming to everyone. Let's take a look at the example. A hotel plans to expand its convention center. The manager wants to develop a combination of a small, medium, and large size rooms for this project. The table on this slide shows everyone the size and the development cost for developing a room under different category. For instance, if the hotel wants to develop a small conference room, it needs 400 square feet, and the development cost for one small conference room will be $18,000. You can find the size and development cost for other type of rooms. The manager wants to figure out how many rooms under different categories should be built. This is the research question. The manager is facing some uh, constraints. First constraint, the manager would like to add uh, five small 
10 media and uh, 15 large conference rooms. But the numbers are not set on the stone. They are flexible. We haven't found the exact numbers yet, so we have the flexibility. Next, the manager prefers that the total expansion is 25,000 square feet, and his budget is $1 million. If possible, he doesn't want the investment more than this limit. This is another constraint the hotel is facing. Based on all of these constraints, we need to figure out how many different types of rooms should be built eventually. Let's talk about the decision variables in this case first. We want to find out how many different types of rooms should be built eventually. So the number of small rooms, the number of media rooms, and the number of large rooms should be the decision variables in our analysis. There is a constraint on these decision variables. The constraint is, the manager would like to add 5 small rooms, 10 media rooms, and 15 large rooms. Even though the numbers are flexible, it will be better if the final results are as close as 5 small, 10 media, and 15 large rooms. Let's use a small room as an example to analyze this question. Let's create a variable called uh, x sub 1. It represents the real number of uh, small rooms that will be eventually built in this expansion project. We don't know the value for x sub 1 yet. This is the number we want to find out, right? But uh, we do know it will be better if the real number for x sub 1 is as close as to 5. This is the ideal number for small rooms the manager wants to see. But uh, there could be some possibilities. After the analysis, we can find out uh, the value for x sub 1 is 8, then we need to build 3 more rooms than what the manager wants. There could be another possibility. After our new analysis, we find uh, the value for x sub 1 is 4. Then we build uh, one more room short than what the manager wants. Let's create uh, two new variables to represent these uncertainties. The two new variables are d sub 1 minus and d sub 1 plus. I want to use d sub 1 minus to represent the underdeveloped number of uh, small conference rooms and the d sub 1 plus to represent the overdevelopment number of uh, small rooms. As you can see, there is a mathematical relationship existing among x sub 1, d sub 1 minus, d sub 1 plus, and the ideal scenario, phi, five small conference rooms, as you can see on this slide. Some classmates may have a question about uh, the equation on this slide. How can I use it? Let's say after the analysis, we find out the final value for x sub 1 is 9. Then what should be d sub 1 minus? What should be this value? If the final result for x sub 1 is 9, then the underdevelopment number of small rooms should be 0. Because we find out the real number is more than 5, so there is no underdevelopment, right? There is only overdevelopment. The value for d sub 1 plus should be 4. How can I get 4? 9 minus 5 equals to 4. This is how we use this equation in the overdevelopment scenario. What if we find out the value for x sub 1 is 2 after our analysis? The value for x sub 1 is 2 now. So we are having the underdevelopment issue, right? Then the value for d sub 1 minus should be 3. 2 plus 3 equals to 5, right? Do we have an overdevelopment issue? No, we don't have it. So d sub 1 plus should be 0. This is how we use the equation, as you can see on this slide. Because we don't know the real value for x sub 1 yet, 
So we have to consider both the underdevelopment uncertainty and the overdevelopment uncertainty in our analysis. Also, we want to add the underdevelopment number but uh, subtract the overdevelopment number. The total of the equation on the left side should be 5. That is the ideal scenario the manager wants. We can use the same logic to consider the media rooms and the large rooms. No matter if they are overbuilt or underbuilt, the total for media rooms should be 10. The total for large rooms should be 15. These are the ideal numbers the manager would like to see. Don't forget, the manager also has some uh, preferences about uh, total expansion size and uh, total budget. To calculate total expansion size, we use the size of uh, each room to multiply the real number of uh, rooms under different categories that will be built eventually. The total size plus the underbuilt and uh, overbuilt uncertainties this total size should be 25,000 square feet. Also, we can calculate the, the total budget. The total budget should be $1 million. This is how we build the decision variables and the constraints in our analysis. We just discussed the decision variables and the constraints for our analysis. We haven't talked about the objective variable yet. What should be the objective? In a data analysis, it's good to have uh, some flexibilities. As you can see, the manager doesn't require a specific number of uh, small, media, or large rooms. He just uh, gives us some uh, guidance. It's good to have uh, this flexibility. But uh, flexibility also means uncertainties. I believe many classmates already know another term of uh, uncertainties. They are risk, right? It will be better if we can minimize the risk factor in an analysis with soft constraints. So minimize the risk factor, the underbuilt and the overbuilt uncertainties should be the goal of this analysis as you can see on this slide. This is the goal. We could have an overbuild possibility or underbuild possibility. So we add all of these uncertainties together and we want the software to minimize the value of this total. That will be the goal. After we figure out the objective variable, we need to take care of a potential issue. The issue is uncertainties are not at the same level yet at this moment. Let's say after our analysis, we find that we underbuilt one small room, but uh, overused $20,000 in budget. If we simply add one with 20,000, we will have a, a issue in our analysis. The issue is we over exaggerated the uncertainties in the budget aspect but uh, underestimated the uncertainties in the small room planning. Why? Because 20,000 is much, much larger than the value one. If we don't do anything, the uncertainties with uh, larger values will overshadow the uncertainties with uh, smaller values. That's why we need to do a transformation on the objective variable. This is what we will do. We use the targeted value for each factor to divide the uncertainties for each factor. Let's say we underbuilt uh, one small room. The targeted value for small room is 5. 1 over 5 equals to 20%. For the budget uncertainty, the targeted value is uh, 1 million. Currently, we overuse the 20,000. 20,000 over 1 million equals to 2%. Now all the uncertainties are transformed into percentages. They are at the same level now. This is the transformation we want to do on the uncertainties. 
Let's use the logic we just discussed to implement our analysis in Excel. First, let's transform all the known information, as you can see on this table, into the Excel file. Let's choose a cell. Let's choose C4. We have a type of room. And then we have a small, medium, large type. Next, in C5, let's type in size per room and then the development cost per room. For small size, we need to invest 18,000 as the development cost. 18,000. And also, for each small conference room, we need 400 square feet. For media size, we need 33,000 development cost. 33,000. And the, the size for each uh, media room is 750. 750. And then for each large room, we need uh, 1,050 square feet. Dep development cost is uh, 45,150. These are the known information. Next, let's build the constraints. Let's choose C9 and then type in constraints. For the constraint variable, we have a small room planning, medium room planning, large room planning, and also the total expansion size. This is 25,000 square feet available space. And also we need to look at the total budget. This is the 1 million ideal number to the budget. In the constraint, we need to consider the real number of rooms being built. And also we need to consider underdevelopment number and the overdevelopment number. Next, we need to calculate the real total real total. We want the real total to be as close as the targeted value. Targeted value. We already know the ideal number for small room is 5. For media size is 10. For large size is 15. We also know the ideal expansion size is 25,000 and the total budget should be 1 million. So let's type in this known information into the constraint area. Next, let's build the constraint equations in the Excel file. Let me zoom in the file a little bit so you can see it more clearly. The first equation should be the real total for small room equals to x sub 1, right, the real number for small room, plus the underdevelopment number, but minus the overdevelopment uncertainty. This is the first constraint equation. We can do the same for media size. In cell E13, let's type in the real number for media room, plus the underdevelopment uncertainty, but uh, minus the overdevelopment uncertainty. This is the real total for media size. And then for the large size, we can do the same. The real number for large number plus underdevelopment, but minus overdevelopment number. These are the real total for the number of rooms in different categories. Next, let's calculate uh, the total, real total for expansion size. In cell G10, let's type in equal sign. And then I want to type in sum product. I want to use the real number of rooms to multiply the uh, size for each room under different category. This will be the real number of uh, total expansion size, right? 
in some product I have two parameters. The first parameter is range D10 colon F10 and then a comma. The second parameter is D5 and then colon F5. I use the real number of rooms in different categories to multiply the size of each room under different categories. This will be the total, the real number of a total expansion size. I can use the same logic to calculate the real number of a total budget. Again, I will use the sum product function. I use D10 to F10 and then a comma to multiply the cost for each room under different categories. D6 to F6 and then press enter. This will be the real investment and the real expansion size. I want uh, this number to be as close as 25,000 and uh, 1 million. For the total expansion, we also have uncertainties, right? Underdevelopment or overdevelopment. So we need to calculate uh, the real total for the expansion size. In cell G13, let's type in equal sign. And then G10 plus the under development uncertainty, which is in cell G11, but minus G12, the over development uncertainty. This is the uncertainty we need to consider for the total expansion size. Press enter. We can do the same for the budget, budget consideration. In cell H13, let's type in equal sign and then click on H10 plus under development uncertainty but uh, minus over development uncertainty. This is the real total for the budget aspect. Press enter. We want the real total to be as close as to the values listed in the targeted value row. This is our goal. Next, we need to calculate uh, the percentage of uh, uncertainties. Remember, we need to do the transformation on the objective variable, right? So let's type in percentage. Percentage. In cell C16. And also, let's copy the label from uh, D9 to H9. Copy this label into uh, D16 to H16. This will be the uncertainty percentage. For the percentage, we need to consider the underbuilt uncertainty and the overbuilt uncertainty, right? For the underbuilt uncertainty, for the small room planning, in cell D17, I want to type in equal sign. And then I want the underbuilt uncertainty, which is in cell D11, to be divided by the target value for small room planning, which is in cell D14, D11 slash D14. This will be the underbuilt percentage for small room planning, right? Press enter. For the rest of cells in row 17, we can drag the autofill button of D17 to the rest of the cells. For the overbuilt uncertainty, in cell D18, let's type in equal sign, and then let's click on cell D12. This number divided by cell D14 by the targeted value. Press enter. And then we want to drag the autofill button of D18 to the rest of the cells in this row. Basically, we have finished the Excel file. But uh, we can make our analysis file more user-friendly. We can go to the uh, hotel manager's office and ask him which uncertainty he would like to focus on. We can add the weight for different uh, uncertainty percentages. So let's choose a new cell. Let's choose C20 and then, then type in weight. Under weight, we also need to consider underbuild uncertainty and uh, overbuild uncertainty. Also, let's copy the label in row 16. Copy this into 
row 20. We will ask the manager, would you focus on underbuilt uncertainty or overbuilt uncertainty? If the manager says yes, please focus on the underbuilt uncertainty for the small room planning. Then we will give a value 1. Value 1 in cell D21. That means I want to put more weight on this uncertainty consideration. And then for the overbuilt uncertainty for small room planning, I will give it a 0. That means I don't need to look at the overbuilt uncertainty. We can do the same for other factors. Let's say the manager wants to focus on the overbuilt uncertainty. Then we type in value 1 in overbuilt uncertainty. And then for underbuilt uncertainty for media room planning, we give a 0. And also we can do the same for large room uncertainty. Let's say he wants to focus on the underbuilt uncertainty. Then we type in 1 for underbuilt and then 0 for overbuilt. For the uh, total expansion, let's say he wants to focus on uh, overbuilt. Then we type in 1 for overbuilt and then 0 for underbuilt. For total budget, if he wants to focus on overbuilt uncertainty, we give 1 and then 0 for underbuilt uncertainty. Notice that weights are very subjective. We need to ask the data user which uncertainty they would like to focus on. If they would like to focus on underbuilt uncertainty, we give 1 as a weight for this analysis. And then overbuilt we don't need to consider anymore, we give 0. If they want to focus on overbuilt uncertainty, we give 1. And then for the underbuilt uncertainty, we give 0. Finally, we need to calculate uh, the objective variable. Let's type in objective in cell C24. And then in cell D24, let's type in equal sign, sum product. We need to select uh, two ranges for this sum product uh, function. The first range we want to select is from uh, D17 to H18. This is the first parameter. And then we want to select the second range from uh, D21 to H22. This means we want to use the percentage for each uncertainty for each variable to multiply the weight the manager want to put on. That will be the total risk or total uncertainty. We want to minimize this risk factor or uncertainty factor. Press enter. We are ready to perform the uh, optimization analysis. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see the total spreadsheet. Let's click uh, data tab on the top and then select uh, solver. For objective, we want to minimize the risk factor. The risk factor is in cell D24, right? Select D24. And then we want to choose mean, minimize for this option. Next, we need to choose the decision variables. Click uh, changing variable cells. Click on this. This one, we need to select uh, two ranges. First, let's select uh, D from uh, D10 to uh, F12. Let's select this range, D10 to F12. And then you want to press and hold the control key on your keyboard. Press and hold the control key. And then select range D11 to H12. And then release the control key on your keyboard. As you can see, you selected two independent ranges for this variable, right? Select these two. And then click uh, Confirm button. Next, we need to add the constraints. Click uh, Add. The constraint is the real total should be exactly targeted value. 
this is the ideal scenario, right? So let's select the, the real total. It's in range D13 to H13. And then in the drop down list in the middle, choose equals to. Equals to the targeted value. This is what the manager wants, right? Let's select the range D14 to H14. And then click uh, OK. Next, we need to consider another constraint. Another constraint is what we learned in the previous lecture. The number of rooms, no matter you have underbuilt or overbuilt uncertainties, no matter what it is, the number of rooms can only be integers, right? So we have to add this integer constraint into this box. Click Add. And then select the range from D10 to F12. These are the variables about uh, the number of uh, rooms under different categories, right? So select this range, D10 to F12. And then in the drop-down list in the middle, choose INT. This specify the values for in this range can only be integers. And then click OK. Next, we check the box before non-negative constraint. We want to select this box. And then in the solving method, let's choose simplex LP, linear programming. And then click uh, solve. And then the solver function will say, congratulations, you find a solution, right? Click uh, keep the solution and then click OK. Let's change the look a little bit. Let's change the background color of uh, D24 to yellow to indicate uh, this is the objective variable. And then select uh, cell uh, D10 to F13. D10 to F13. And then change the background color to a light blue to indicate uh, these are the decision variables. We also need to do the same for range D11 and uh, H13, select this range, and then change the background color to light blue. Let's take a look at the analysis result. First, let's look at cells D10, E10, and uh, F10. These are the real number of rooms that should be built under different categories. The analysis result suggests us to build five small rooms, zero media rooms, and 20 large rooms. If we build according to this plan, then the objective variable will be zero. What does this mean? This means if we build according to what the uh, software gives us, the uncertainties or risk factors will be zero, which means all of your constraints will be satisfied and also we take care of the manager's preferences. Let's look at uh, the total size, total expansion size. If we build the rooms according to this plan, then we only need uh, 23,000 for the available space, right? The manager doesn't want us to build more than 25,000 and currently 23,000 is smaller than 25,000. So this constraint is uh, satisfied. For the budget, he doesn't want us to invest more than 1 million. If we build like this, we only need uh, $993,000. It's not beyond 1 million either. So if we build according to what the software suggests us, the uncertainties or the risk factors is minimal and uh, all the soft constraints are satisfied. This is how we use Go programming to deal with the questions with soft constraints. Because of the software difference, your answers could be a little different, but as long as the soft constraints are satisfied, even though the number could be different, your analysis would be the right one. Go programming is a high-level optimization analysis. 
to some classmates, it could be a challenging topic. But uh, I really think uh, it's worth the effort if you try to comprehend this technique. If you present a user-friendly data analysis like this one, I believe your supervisor or manager will be impressed. He or she probably will buy a very nice dinner to reward your hard work.